horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Away! Aaron Wilcox was a well-to-do rancher. His large ranch, the Circle W, was a few miles from Hillcrest, a small town in the southwest. One morning, Aaron and his wife, Luanna, drove to town to meet the stage from the east, which was bringing their 21-year-old son, Jim, back from an eastern school. They stood with a curious crowd at the stage station as the stagecoach arrived. Well, son, sure been a pleasure traveling with you. Thanks. I enjoyed your company, too, Mr. Hawkins. I'm going to keep this sketch you made of me while we were riding. No, I, I did it in a hurry. Hey, here comes Dad and Mom. <laughs> Jim, son. Mom, Dad. Oh, it's so wonderful to have you home to stay. Hi, uh, Jim. Mighty glad to see you. Golly, it's good to be back. Oh, by the way, I, I want you to meet Mr. Hawkins. He rode with me from Kansas City. Uh, how, how do you do, Mr. Hawkins? Mr. Wilcox, that boy of yours is a mighty fine artist. Yes, sir. Look at this sketch he did of me while we were riding. Look there. Every little detail. Even put in that spot on my vest. <laughs> Jim, that's mighty well done. I reckon a boy has to amuse himself now and then. Jim tells me he's going to make drawing and painting his vocation. I figure he'll be famous someday. Jim's come home to be a rancher, Mr. Hawkins. And that's what I expect him to be. I'm glad to have met you, sir. We'll be getting along now. Goodbye. Come along, the winner. Let's go, Jim. Goodbye, Goodbye Mr. Yeah, Hawkins. Bye-bye. After they left town in the buckboard, Jim and his parents rode a short distance in silence. Then Jim spoke. Dad. Yes, what is it, son? You didn't want mean what you said to Mr. Hawkins, did you? Did did you expect me to be a rancher? Of course I meant it. But I want to go on with my painting, Dad. Jim's right, Aaron. He ought to be able to live his own life. You keep out of this, Luanna. Jim will work at ranching and like it. I don't want to hear any more about it. Get up there. Get along. Jim Wilcox seemingly gave way to his father's decision. And for the next few weeks, he left every morning with the foreman and the ranch hands to work on the range. 
One afternoon, Aaron rode out to where strays were being branded. Who there? Who? Who there? Howdy, boss. Didn't expect you to come out here. Just so they look things over, Tex. Where, uh, where's Jim? Oh, he's around someplace. Why is he here with the rest of you? Well, I reckon he'll be back before long. Tex, you're lying to me. You're foreman of this spread, and I put Jim in your charge and told you to make sure he did his share of the work. Sure, I know, uh, but... Uh, now step him and haul me. I want to know why Jim isn't here with the others. Now, where is he? To tell the truth, boss, he doesn't take to ranching too well. For the past couple of weeks, he's been taking his painting equipment and going over to Mesa Rock. Seems he's painting a picture of Rocky Ridge. You mean to say, in spite of my orders, Jim is sneaking away every day to do painting? It isn't exactly sneaking, boss. After all, if that's what he wants to do... I don't care what he wants to do. No son of mine is going to be a no-good painter. I saw some of the paintings he has in the barn. They're mighty good, I think. What you think doesn't matter to me. You run the ranch. I'll see to my boy's future. Now you get over to Mesa Rock and tell Jim I want to see him. I'll be waiting at the house. Get him. Later, Jim entered the ranch house and found his father waiting with a scowl on his face. You want to see me, Dan? Yes, you do. What's this I hear about you sneaking away to paint pictures when you're supposed to be helping the hands on the ranch? Well, uh, I saw an unusual place I wanted to put on canvas, Dad. I, I couldn't resist going there to do a picture of it. Dad, I don't like ranching. I, I know I'll make good as an artist if you listen to reason. <laughs> Boy, Thunder, I've heard enough of this. If I hear any more about that crazy painting, I'll smash up that stuff of yours and burn the pictures you already did. Fact is, don't bring one of them into this house. You're going to work with the men on the ranch from now on, you understand? But my future... Dad. Your future will be taken care of if you do what I tell you. Now you report to Tex and do what he tells you to do. And if you fool around anymore with that painting, I'll turn you out. Now get out of my sight before I really lose my temper. Jim's mother persuaded the young man to do as his father wished, with the hope that someday he might see things Jim's way. Two weeks later, the foreman Tex rode in from the range and spoke to Aaron, who was standing near the corral. Oh, who the hell is it? Hi, boss. Howdy, Tex. How are things going? All right, I reckon. Jim's attending to business like you want him to. Good. I thought he'd soon get those fancy notions out of his head. We put some of the prize cattle to graze over in Narrow Valley today. I noticed some prospectors put up a cabin smack against a cliff along Rocky Ridge. But there's a smooth, rocky surface all around this place, so he'll not bother the cattle any. They won't go near his cabin to graze. But, boss, it's what about... It's open range, so there's nothing we can do about him being there, I suppose. And as long as he doesn't interfere with my cattle, we'll let him be. Well, put up your horse and come inside. Supper will soon be ready. Early one morning, a few days later, Tex entered the ranch house where Aaron was having breakfast with his wife and son. Hey, boss, something's uh, happened. What's up, Tex? One of the counties just came in from Narrow Valley. He says some of the prize cattle are missing. What? Hey. what? I know it sounds impossible, boss, with men watching at each end of the valley every night, but it's the truth. They are missing. Then, sakes, how could they be? There's no way out of that valley except through the passes at each end, Tex. I know that, ma'am. It has me stumped. It stormed last night, and we couldn't find any tracks. But still, the cattle are gone. I can't understand. Something strange somewhere. Jimmy, ride to town and bring the sheriff and his men out here. Yes, sir. I'm going to get at the bottom of this mystery. The sheriff and his deputies arrived, and after investigating the valley, they too were mystified by the disappearance of the cattle. Aaron Wilcox and some of his hands rode with the sheriff to search for some trace of the rustlers. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger and his Indian companion, Tonto, moved along a trail outside of Hillcrest. You think rustlers who steal cattle near Pecos moved down this way, Kimasabi? Oh, I don't know, Tonto. The trail showed the gang headed this way, but that storm last night washed out their tracks. Oh, look, Kimasabi, many riders coming around Bend yonder. We'll turn into the woods until they've gone past. Come, Silver, come. Come, Scott. Come, Silver. Come, Silver. 
As the masked man and Indian headed into the woods bordering the trail, shots rang out. We reached the woods just in time. Most of Get him up! Stop. A few moments later, the sheriff and the others stopped at the place where the masked man and Indian had turned off the trail. Oh, 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 oh. Aaron, one of those men was Max. The other was an Indian. Reckon they're a couple of the rustlers who stole your cattle. Must be. We'd better get after them, Chief. I'll take some men and follow them through the woods. You and the others keep on along the trail. They might double back at some other point. All right. Come on, Titch. You and the hands red with me. Right, boss. Eat him. All right. Now the rest of you, let's try to trail those two owl hoots through the woods. And if we spot them and they don't stop, shoot to kill. Let's go. Get up there. Come on. The Lone Ranger and Tonto used various means which long experience had taught them to cover their trail. Finally, they stopped in a clump of trees in the hills. Oh, 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 easy, yeah, easy, easy, easy now. Uh, I'm sure we've covered our tracks, Tonto. Uh, me think riders who shoot at us with posse, then think we outlaws. Something must have happened in this neighborhood recently. Ride to town, Tonto. Get a few supplies and try to find out why that posse is searching the hills. Ah. Uh, me go now. Maybe me hear what happened. Easy, Scout. Easy, fella. Get him off, Scout! While Tonto was in town, the posse returned. He was in the cafe when Tex and some of the men came in. Hi, Tex. I understand the men at the Circle W have been riding in a posse with the sheriff, hunting for rustlers. That's right. We spotted a couple of owl hoots who might be with a gang, but we lost their trail. Yeah, what I can't figure is how anyone could get cattle out in Arrow Valley like they did. That has all of us wondering. We keep cowpokes at each end of that valley so the cattle don't wander. They would have seen anyone trying to go through either pass with those prize cattle. You think the two men you spotted were really a couple of the rustlers? Could be. We didn't get a good look at them. They cleared out through the woods as soon as they saw us coming. They were out of range of our guns. We do know one of them was masked. Say, how's young Wilcox getting along with his picture making? <laughs> to my way of thinking, that's sure a strange business for a strong young fella to take up. Uh, maybe you think so, but I'm not so sure. You know, he painted a picture of Rocky Ridge that stretches along one side of Narrow Valley. By Jiminy, it looks almost real. Got everything in it, even to the smallest tree, seems like. <laughs> yeah, of course, that was done a few weeks ago. Since the boss put his foot down, Jim gave up his painting and sticks to range. <laughs> too bad he wasn't painting there when the rustlers took the cattle. He might have put them in the picture, too. Yeah. <laughs> if they'd been there, he'd have painted them in, I reckon. The boss makes him keep his pictures in the barn, doesn't allow them in the house. <laughs> There's one thing, though, that he did put in the picture that's a mistake. What? Well, I noticed he painted what looks like some kind of hole or opening in the side of the cliff. There never was any hole there, I'm sure of that. The prospector's cabin is just about that place now. Well, boys, I'll set up everybody to refreshments. Then we'll be getting along. Oh, right. What'll it be, boys? Tonto left town later and soon arrived at the camp where the Lone Ranger waited. Oh, scum, oh, fella. Easy, scum, easy, fella. The Indian told what he had heard at the cafe. The Lone Ranger listened intently, then remarked. The same gang we're hunting may have taken those cattle, Tonto. But how them leave valley? Cowpokes on guard at narrow passes each end. I don't know, but they found a way. I've seen Rocky Ridge. I know there's no opening through it anywhere. Um, that right. Yet I understand that in the painting by young Wilcox, an opening is indicated. Ah. I'm sure there's a solid wall the entire length of Rocky Ridge. I'm anxious to see that painting, Toto, to find out where he indicated such an opening. Then I want to see the new cabin that's been built near the cliff in Narrow Valley. If it covers that spot, we'll solve the mystery of the stolen cattle. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
want to continue. The Lone Ranger decided to see the picture of Rocky Ridge, which Jim Wilcox had painted. That night, after the moon had risen, he and Tonto rode a back trail to the Wilcox Ranch. While Tonto waited in the shadows, the masked man, after making certain no one was near the barn, cautiously went to it. Later, he returned, carrying the large painting. I found it, Tonto. We'll take it to camp where we'll study it. I'll see this return later. All right, let's go. Easy, steady. Easy, Scott. Easy, Tonto. Come on, Silver. Come up, Scott. Later, at their camp, the two men studied the painting by candlelight. Tonto, this is signed Jim Wilcox. In my opinion, he's a fine artist. Oh, yes. It looked plenty real. Yes, it does. And you look there, in paint pine tree near cliff. Yes, and to one side, there close to the base of the cliff, he's indicated a large hole. I know there was no such opening there. Isn't that what fellow from ranch say? He also said that's where the new cabin now stands. Uh, you think cabin built to hide opener? Yes. I definitely want to investigate that new cabin. In the morning, I'll disguise my features and go to the Wilcox Ranch. Oh, why go there? Narrow Valley is well guarded now, so we can't go there. I'll tell Wilcox what I suspect because of what we saw in that painting. And I'll ask to see that cabin. Meantime, we'll return the painting to the barn tonight. Once more, the two men took a back trail to the Wilcox place. And Tonto waited while the Lone Ranger carried the painting back to the barn. Meanwhile, in the bunkhouse, the foreman tech stood near a window which faced the back of the barn. Suddenly, he spoke to the cowpokes. Hey, men, grab your guns and follow me. I just saw someone sneaking into the barn. Let's go, and don't make any noise. The ranch hands quickly left the bunkhouse and quietly surrounded the big barn. Inside, the masked man carefully replaced the painting, then cautiously moved toward the back door to leave. He slowly pushed open the large, creaking door. Then, as he stepped out... Reach and freeze, mister. We got you covered. The Lone Ranger instinctively raised his hands. He saw the cowpokes moving toward him with ready guns. Hey, look, a mask on right there. Why don't you go for the boss? Hurry. I'll get him. Now, you, what were you doing in that barn? Frankly, I was looking at some paintings. What? <laughs> You hear that, fellas? He was looking at Jim's pictures. That's a hot one. He must be the masked hombre we saw today, Tex. We ought to string him up. Go, yeah, go. he's one of the rustlers. Yes, sir. I'm not an outlaw. No? We'll soon find out about that. We'll take his guns, men, and rip off that mask. Then we'll find out who he is. Yeah, yeah what's going on here? We caught this out who's sneaking out of the barn, boss. That's right. The Lone Ranger looked searchingly at Aaron Wilcox in the bright moonlight. Then he remarked, You're Aaron Wilcox, aren't you? Sure, Anybody could have found that out around here? You remember a few years ago before you owned such a large ranch? When the Apaches were on the warpath and tried to come through Rocky Pass? Yeah, sure I remember. That's when Sam Pender was going to fence in the range. We used the barbed wire to make barbaric cage across Rocky Pass. Remember who gave you men the idea? Yeah, sure. An hombre on a big white stallion. A mass man. Gee, hold on a minute. Why, Thunder, I think you're the same hombre. Yes, I am. Great day. Uh, maybe if you showed me a silver bullet and that big stallion and the engine... All right, here's one of my bullets. Uh, what? Hey, yep, it's silver. Yeah. Hello, bring the horses. Hey, boss, what is this? Tell you in a minute, Tex. That proves it. Boys, this man is a friend. But why was he sneaking around the barn? I told you, I looked at a painting. Whatever he was doing, it's all right with me. Of course, I'm curious when you say you were looking at paintings. I reckon we're not needed here if you vouch for the masked man in Indian. That's right, Tex. Take the boys back to the bunkhouse. I want to have a talk with the masked man. Briefly, the Lone Ranger explained to Aaron that he and Tonto had been trailing a gang of rustlers and that he thought the same gang had stolen the cattle. He told about looking at the painting of Rocky Ridge. Aaron went and brought the picture and then took the masked man into the ranch house kitchen. I'll put the picture on the table and we'll look it over. Now, uh, does Rocky Ridge look just like that? Yep, it sure does, mister. By golly, my boy did a good job at that. I think he's a fine artist. Wait a minute. There's one thing he got wrong. You mean that hole in the cliff? Yeah. 
Just about where that hole is, there's a prospector's cabin plumb against the cliff. Oh? Of course, the boy must have painted this before that cabin was there. It was built recently. Mm, that's interesting. Let me look again at that opening. Mr. Wilcox, I still think that isn't a mistake as you think. We may have found the answer to the mystery of the missing cattle. What do you mean? That looks like a tunnel through Rocky Ridge. <laughs> what? Have you questioned the man who lives in that cabin? Uh-huh, and he said he didn't see or hear anything last night. Of course, there was a storm going on. Did you look inside the cabin? It's strange it was built against the cliff, as you say. Just glanced in. Nothing out of the ordinary. I may be wrong, but I think it would be wise to send for the sheriff now. Then we'll ride with your men to investigate that cabin. We may find a tunnel behind it. What? Well, all right, if you say so. I'll send text to town right away for the sheriff. The Lone Ranger and Tonto waited at the Wilcox Ranch until the sheriff and his deputies arrived. Aaron Wilcox explained that they were friends and wanted to help find the rustlers. You must be the two men we spotted on the trail earlier today. That's right. <laughs> we sure thought you were outlaws, mister. Now tell me, why do you think we might get a clue by riding to that cabin in Narrow Valley? I think it's worth investigating, Sheriff. I was inside that cabin, went to ask questions. Nothing to cause suspicion. The prospector's smart. Made a door in the back wall of the cabin and started to dig into the cliff there. In that way, he can work in any kind of weather. He showed you the hole he had dug? Nope, I wasn't interested in that. Well, I am. Sheriff, if the masked man is suspicious, I'm willing to go along with him. All right, Aaron, we'll go too. Later in the cabin in Narrow Valley, a prospector was talking to a rough-looking visitor. <laughs> ah, Bushy, you sure were smart to think of putting this cabin here and having me pose as a prospector. Well, thanks, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> you know, with those whiskers, you look the part. Before we're through, we'll have a lot of Wilcox cattle moved out of here. <laughs> well, I told the sheriff I had that big door in the back wall so as I could dig in any kind of weather. Naturally, he didn't look for hoof marks under the mat and covered in the floor. Uh, when I discovered that natural tunnel going almost through Rocky Ridge from the small canyon beyond, I realized that by digging just a very short distance, we could make an opening in Narrow Valley here. Well, it was smart. Of course, I had to figure out how to cover the opening right away once it was made. It was opened only two days before I built the cabin and nobody saw it. <laughs> it sure works. <laughs> Has uh, Carlos taken the cattle across the border yet? No, no. He ought to be here sometime soon to get them across before dawn. <laughs> Next time it storms, we'll move more cattle through the cabin, through the tunnel, to the canyon. <laughs> hey, a lot of riders have stopped outside. Yeah, too late for me to get through the opening. Tell them I'm a friend visitor. Reckon they just want to ask more questions. I reckon you don't mind if we come in. Come on, men. Hey, this cabin isn't big enough to hold all of you. We don't mind being crowded. Who's that? There's a friend of mine came to visit me. Hey, there's a masked man. Never mind worrying about him. He's with us. I'm sure this fellow doesn't mind showing us where he's been digging, Sheriff. Why should I have a right to dig where I want? That door is extra large in the back wall. I'll open it, Sheriff. Hey, get away from there. Now, don't draw. No. Oh. Yeah, that oh. proves there's something they want to hide. Open that door, mister. We'll keep these two men covered. Now look here. A big opening through the ridge, Sheriff. This man couldn't dig that in a few weeks or in years. Well, here's a lantern. Oh, yes. Look, the hoof marks of cattle. We'll take up this mat, Sheriff. Hey, Sheriff. There's hoof marks on the earth floor under this mat. Yes. As I thought they brought the stolen cattle through here. Let's go through that tunnel with drawn guns. We may find the rest of the gang. Right. Get your guns ready, men. Let's go. Leading two men to guard Bushy and Jake, the others went cautiously through the large opening. It was a natural tunnel through the ridge, and soon they came to the other end, which opened into a small canyon. There, several men sat around a campfire while cattle grazed nearby. There are your cattle, Mr. Wilcox. Well, they should be right. And there's the others of the gang. We'll rush in and take them by surprise. Let's go. Yep. For a short time, the rustlers, taken by surprise, fought back. But being greatly outnumbered, they were soon subdued. The crooks were taken to town by the sheriff and his men, and the stolen cattle were driven back through the opening and through the cabin into the valley. 
The Lone Ranger and Tonto rode to the Circle W Ranch with Aaron Wilcox. After bidding the rancher good night, the masked man and Indian rode slowly away while Aaron entered the ranch house where his wife, Luanna, and his son were waiting. Dad, I, I didn't know until after you left that you'd gone to search for the rustlers again. I, of course, I should have gone with you. Oops, you belonged at home, Jim. Frankly, we caught the rustlers and got my cattle back. Oh, Aaron, that's wonderful. How did you ever do it? Well, sir, if it hadn't been for Jim, maybe we wouldn't have found them. For me? What do you mean? <laughs> Son, I made a mistake when I told you to give up that picture making. Oh, Dad, do you mean it? Yep, I sure do. Why, you're going to be famous, Jim. Lane sakes, whatever has come over you, Aaron Wilcox? Well, somebody who ought to know told me he thought Jim's paintings show him to be a fine artist. Because Jim paints so real-like, we found out how those wrestlers were getting away with the cattle. Briefly, Aaron told his wife and son about the cabin which covered the newly made opening through the ridge. When he finished, Jim asked... Dad, who was the man who was smart enough to figure it out? The same man who's smart enough to know the work of a fine artist, son. Because of what he said, you're going to do what you want to do, paint pictures. Yes, sir, I... I may be stubborn, but I'm always willing to take the advice of the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.